Hey everybody, it's Frida, July 20th, 2014, a little bit after 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, come home from work today and was checking out this article on Fox News, Cartel Suspected as High Caliber Gunfire Sends Border Patrol Scrambling on the Rio Grande. Looking down through this, um, the article, and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, I'll put the link below, but uh, it says, U.S. Border Patrol agents on the, on the American side of the Rio Grande were forced to take cover Friday night when high caliber weaponry was fired at them from the Mexican side of the river. The weapons were fired at the U.S. side of the riverbank in the area of the Rincon Peninsula across the Rio Grande from Reynosa, Mexico at about 8.30 p.m., Bullets ricocheted into an area where Border Patrol agents were positioned. Um, they believe that the shots have been fired by 50 cal weapons. Quote, we don't have any armor that can stop a 50 caliber round, so our Border Patrol agents had to take cover when the rounds were ricocheting around them. When the shooting stopped, about 40 to 50 people came out on the U.S. side and turned themselves in. So clearly the rounds were being fired to suppress every effort to stop anybody intervening with anyone or anything coming across. We have no idea what or how many or whom came across with the other illegal immigrants. You know, anybody that's watched a military movie, much less been in the military, or even just, you know, with the police, knows, you know, when somebody's trying to sneak over somewhere, you quote-unquote cover me. So, you know, that person fires rounds to as a distraction and as a cover so the other person can get away. That's what happened here. Um, Border Patrol says the rounds were clearly identifiable because 50 cal weapons make a distinctive noise when fired. Uh, sources say they also believe this is the first time that Border Patrol agents have taken direct fire from the Mexican side of the river in this area. I don't know why we're out here like sitting ducks, one Border Patrol source said. We need help. Well, you know, I'm a 20 gauge, 12 gauge, 22 long rifle kind of girl, and uh, really not a whole lot of comprehension about 50 cal. So, a friend of mine uh, suggested that I look that up because. You know, highly unlikely that um, this is just your average Joe that happened to have access to this type of weaponry, as well as knowing how to use that kind of weaponry and then missing, so they truly were shooting as a cover fire. So, just to give you some uh, insight as to what some 50 cal rounds look like, that would be a gun that would shoot a 50 cal. There's another gun. Give you a little bit of an idea of the size of a 50 cal. This is a picture from the internet. This thing's twice the height of this little girl. So I started thinking about the United Nations being down at the border. Um, we've heard in the last couple of days that the United Nations would like for us to treat these illegal immigrants as refugees. Uh, giving them asylum instead of treating them as illegals and making them go to court in six months and apply for citizenship and go through immunizations and education and or deportation. So as I started doing some search on the United Nations, I ran across a couple of articles that piqued my interest. This one here was on Breitbart.com, and again, this link will be down below. The United Nations Office on Drug and Crime recently released a report, Transnational Organized Crime in Central America and the Caribbean, that identifies both Mexican cartels and street gangs as conduits for individuals from Africa and Asia entering the U.S. illegally. The report identifies the Islamic terrorist having haven of Somalia as being one of the nations from which the illegal U.S.-bound border crossers are originating. I spent half the morning arguing with somebody today about, oh, the poor little children, the poor little children. These are not all poor little children. These little children are being brought across by adults. That's their supervisors that are bringing them in. These are people that have been paid. 
uh, by families of these children, take my child into America, get them in there. Once they become legal, then I can join them. And these kids have to survive through sex trafficking, rapes, beatings, um, gang initiations, etc. to get here. They're coming across with adults. And according to the UN Threat Assessment, which refers to illegal aliens as irregular migrants, it states that Central Americans are not the only ones being smuggled through Mexico to the United States. Irregular migrants from the Horn of Africa, which includes Eritrea, Somalia, and Ethiopia, as well as South Asia, Bangladesh, Nepal, and India, China, and other African and Asian states are being smuggled through Central America. Um, the, the National Counterterrorism Center, which serves as the primary organization in the United States government for integrating and analyzing all intelligence pertaining to counterterrorism, states that much of Somalia was taken over by Al-Shabaab, Al the militant wing of the Somali Council of Islamic Courts, before it entered a phase of on and off control of various key regions of the failed nation. You know, this article, and I'm going to, like I said, put the link to this down below. This was one I kind of accidentally came across. But this right here, coming out of the United Nations, it's the United Nations putting this uh, series of reports together that are referenced in this article is clearly explaining the fact that these are not just children coming across the border. Now, my argument this morning was... As far as the children go, the parents down in these countries need to understand it is not okay to put your child on a train with a sex trafficker or a drug cartel or a terrorist and send them on a three-day journey through Mexico and hope that they show up in the United States and then have them bust to God knows where in the United States where they're put into a detention center. This is it's you can't this that's the humanitarian crisis is these adults that are doing this and using their children to get their children in here through the Dream Act and the amnesty and everything else. Then once the kids are here, the hope is that oh well my parents can come and join me now. These parents are risking their children's very lives and souls to get them here. In the meantime, they're sending them through with these kind of people. I, uh, again, I was doing some research on, you know, different things through the United Nations, and um, the speech that was given at the United Nations at the first of the year, it's a 26-page, or no, I'm, this one's not 26 pages, this one's about 10 pages, and I'm not going to get into all of it. Most of the speech had to do with other countries, other parts of the world, but it did bring up the United States, and it says one country where the UASC, which stands for Unaccompanied and Separated Children, are arriving in large numbers as the United States of America. Children primarily from Central America, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras are making the dangerous journey north through Mexico to the United States. This poses formidable challenges. According to a recent study, many of these children are fleeing violence at the hands of organized transnational criminal actors, but also violence in their home. There is an urgent need to develop comprehensive regional response strategies to address this growing phenomenon. You know, that's part of my problem, is when the United Nations wants to step in and say, you know what, you're going to take these children. You're going to accept them as refugees, whether you like it or not. By the way, as you're out there protesting, you're going to be arrested. And I don't care if your community can afford to take on this onslaught of homeless people, no matter where they're from. Um, sorry about that. Then it's, it's a problem because it puts it on us. It's coming from an outside source forcing us to handle a situation that we're not necessarily prepared to handle. And it's causing more of a drive for these people in those countries to send their children here. If, if we open up the borders and say you can claim refugee status, you think that there's a lot of them coming in right now. It's gonna, it, you're not even gonna be able to handle how many there are. Also, while I'm looking through the United Nations, um, 
you know, Children on the Run. It was an article that was just put out by the UN Refugee Agency. And it's talking, you know, look, the poor pitiful pictures of the children. And I'm not saying there's not poor pitiful children, but all these children came from some adults, are surrounded by adults, and the situations that are around them are adults. We have children in Chicago that have been forgotten and left that we need to take care of before we try to take care of the world's children. This, this particular report here is 120 pages long. It was written through the agency in Washington, D.C. And it's going to take me, obviously, some time to get through this. I've got to read all of this uh, to find out the full report. Um, this is talking about how to handle different groups of the refugees, uh, what qualifies as a refugee. Um, how to claim their legal statuses, uh, how to handle them mentally, emotionally, because these are not 14-year-olds like what we're used to having here. A 14-year-old from these third world countries does not behave the same as a 14-year-old from here. They were raised differently. They have different um, living situations that are not necessarily good, and they're unstable. So it's a different level of needs and attention that these children require, and I don't think we're ready to handle them. We are, we have over 17 trillion in debt. We have our own children on the streets of Chicago. Look at Detroit. There's areas all over the country that need our help. They could use the donations. They could use the sponsors. And here we are saying to the world, send us all of your children. We'll take them in on refugee status. By force, our local communities will try to figure out how to handle these busloads of kids that are being dropped off in your area. And oh, by the way, they are accompanied by adults who are terrorists, who are drug cartel, who are sex traffickers, who are in gangs where there's confirmed murders. They don't mind admitting it to you, but coming in as refugee status, it's all wiped clean.